This is the cattle hide. What happened with this? Okay, so during this whole series, I've had two of these tubs spring a leak and screw things up. And now I realize those two tubs were both from about the same era. I got them from different people. You know, they're just old. And that one must have sprung a leak on the bottom because the whole thing was completely drained. And I had packed it, if you remember the previous videos, I had packed it in uh, chopped bark. And, you know, I wanted it in there longer. Like I wanted it in, the, in there till about now, but it drained and I don't know how long it had been completely drained, but probably a long time. So what I did is I took it out of there and it was surprisingly in good shape. Like it didn't seem to uh, form a lot of discolorations from being exposed to air or anything, maybe some. But uh, yeah, I was real surprised, so that's great. But I wasn't really convinced that every part of the hide, like this, some of the really thick, not just thick, but dense, like thick and dense parts, which is a big difference, you know, like there's parts of the hide that are they're just so dense, the fiber is so tight and heavy and packed that it makes all the difference and they're thick too. And I wasn't convinced those were already, so I wanted to put it back. I had some solution. I diluted the solution, put it in here. My e-friend, uh, Dennis Lanigan, we, we've never actually met in person, but he's really good friends with uh, some other good friends of mine. And uh, we're both tanners and he comments a lot on the channel. He knows a lot, like he's probably done more bark tanning than me, I would guess at this point. And he's, you know, studious and curious and worth listening to whatever he has to say. Uh, he was saying that, you know, he has a really tough time with cattle hides with flushing and I did too. And what I basically decided eventually was just don't fight it. You know, don't fight it at all. Do a cursory flushing before you put it in the line, but don't even like go too hard on that. Uh, you know, making sure the tool's at the right sharpness, which is pretty sharp, but not like super sharp. Like you don't want to be gouging the skin and stuff. I've already tried going there. I've tried using a super sharp tool. It didn't really work out. Then lime it. So after it's limed, you're going to get more stuff off easier. So just don't worry about like if it's a little fleshy, whatever, like whatever's on there, fat, anything, just throw it in the lime. It's fine. And then you're going to get a bunch more off that second time. Like you're really going to see a difference after it's limed. And then with the way I do hides, I scud a lot. So I'm going over the flush side a bunch of times anyway. Like I don't know how many times we ended up going over this flush side, but I can't imagine it was less than five. Look at it now. You know, I mean, it's most of the way there and I've never had to really struggle with it. I'm not saying it's always been easy and that I didn't work at certain stages of it because it still is a cattle hide and you want to be getting something off every time. I mean, it's not just, you're not just going through the motions. And now what I want you to notice is how easy what's left comes off like nothing. And I don't look back on this hide and think, wow, that was really hard to uh, get flushed because it was just this gradual process, you know. There's usually like one or two stages where it is a considerable amount of work, but just do a decent job and move on. Because you're gonna find by the time this is completely tanned, even before it's completely tanned, when just this side of the leather is tanned, like the outside layer, which happens very quickly, then this stuff's gonna come off real easy, whatever's left. What I don't want is I don't want, you know, really fleshy stuff, fat, meat, blood. You know, I don't want any of that on here. But if this was thicker than it is, it's okay. I mean, it, it's easy for the tannin to penetrate this because it's a very loose layer. So that's not a problem. So let's, let's talk about scraping technique right here because it matters a lot. If I handed a new tanner this tool, this high, this beam, like uh, take this stuff off, they're not going to use this tool anywhere near the best advantage. Um, it's just one of those things that it looks a lot simpler than it actually is. So this tool is reasonably sharp. Like I could pretty easily damage the skin. I've even seen a couple times where I just scooped out a little bit of skin there. And the sharper the tool is, typically, um, the more you want to lay it flat on the hide. Not completely flat but not like this. The higher it is, the more it's gonna dive and cut and scoop out like, like you know, pieces of hide, or if it's a thin hide, it's gonna tear it open and leave a hole. You can tip it up a little, and, and I'm not telling you what angle to put it at, I'm telling you to experiment with it. Like, keep changing it up. 
if you feel it dig in and catch, try going a little bit lower. And when it's lower, it has more of a slice, like more like a knife and less like a scraper. So if you imagine, like turned it this way, put it at 90 degrees and use it this way, that's pure scrape, right? That's, that's like pure scraping. And then this way, like laid down really low, that's, that's as close as to like a slicing cutting action as you're gonna get. If you have the tool at the right sharpness and you're not pushing too hard and you use some, some sideways slide in there, you're gonna get a really nice cutting action, like a really nice slicing action that's gonna take that stuff off easy without damaging the hide. So the real lesson is, you know, within all that information is just experiment. Like keep mixing it up, keep trying different things, but those are the things that you can change. You can change, you can change the, obviously the, the tool design, but the, the tool sharpness, the angle at which you hold it, how hard you push, and how much of a slide you give it. The other thing is that you'll see that I'm usually holding it slightly this way, which kind of encourages like the more you hold it this way, the more the whole action is, is more like slicing. The same thing with a plane, right? I gotta go get my water jug at the spring. Um, it's so low, it takes like, you know, 15 to 20 minutes to fill up. Where's my plane? Oh no, spoke shave, there's a spoke shave in here. There's a big difference between using it straight like this. This is, this is out too far. Um, and using it at an angle. Like it, it just slices much more easily at an angle. So, you know, when you see people using a draw knife, you're usually going to see them using it at a little bit of an angle. Very common. Because it just works. Like it, it slices better, it slices cleaner, it's less likely to chatter. Um, it's less likely to, you know, cause tear out of the grain. Anyone who's done a lot of woodworking with these type of hand tools just ends up figuring that out. Even if, you know, they're not thinking about it, you'll see them doing it. So one way to get some of that advantage is, is simply to hold the tool at a slight angle. And you'll, you'll see a bit difference there, but you can also accentuate that by holding it straight and moving sideways or holding it at an angle and, and moving slightly sideways. And, and when you try this, like if you guys are out there that are currently tanning or will be soon, try both. Like, don't take my word for it. You know, put, put the hides down where they're flushing or whatever you're doing. You know, lay the tool down and just bulldoze for a while and then start to experiment with tipping the tool at an angle and especially, did you see that? Like it literally sliced underneath and moved out like a, a little chip of hide because I just was getting a little wild there. And, and so what I'm saying is that between that, where you're going too deep and you're cutting down into the skin and you're being kind of not very effective, there's this little magic zone in there, right? There's a, it's, a, it's a scale and there's a little magic zone in there where you can get all the benefits of that slice, slicing action, like having to push less hard, getting cleaner, getting deeper, it's all faster and cutting the hide, right? It's just, there's a, there's a magic spot in there and you're kind of trying to find that and play with it. If you wanna be efficient with these tools, that's, that's exactly what you're doing when it works. Because <clears throat> this tool is on the sharp side, like maybe a little sharp for a novice. Um, okay, there's the, the, um, the brand. This hide was branded. That's gonna look neat. So this is all heavy, like lumpy scar tissue here. Hard to flush around, like there's definitely some extra flesh and stuff left around here. Well, now that stuff's gonna come off pretty, pretty well. You just get down in these little grooves a little bit. Yeah, so again, you know, this whole section of the skin, like, from down here, kind of over in this area, is just incredibly dense. You can almost see it from the coloration here. It almost looks like it's untanned. Crazy dense, like hard. 
that's cattle hide for you. So we're going to take off this time a good like three-eighths of an inch or so to make sure we're getting deep into the skin. And it looks great. Yeah, I mean that's... Before I was a little worried because it just... It seemed like it was a little light in the center. I'm not used to seeing that. It doesn't mean that it wasn't tanned because the the coloring of the skin and the tanning of the skin aren't totally synonymous. It's just kind of the best thing we have to go on. It looks great. I'm gonna call it done. What we're gonna do now is put this in fresh water. But for the most part, it's just gonna be getting water in and getting water back out. And doing that a few times, so there's just not like a lot of this like colored, unbound tannin and dye stuff in there that's gonna come out later, like if the hide's wet. That stuff's definitely good enough to start another hide in. Um, I don't have any current plans, but I just want to keep it in case I get something before it goes bad or whatever. Because it can get pretty funky. It's not, you know, that's not very strong. So it doesn't seem to be spoiling or anything, but it's probably just a matter of time before it starts getting pretty funky. Another thing we'll do uh, presently is you'll see some light discoloration here, like they're kind of like white spots. There's a whole bunch of it here. That is some kind of bloom. What is it? A gallic acid, maybe? It's something that, you know, precipitates like crystals on the surface of the skin during tanning. And uh, it, like here's a bunch of it right here. And it actually is pretty hard to remove. You have to actually kind of scrub it off. You can see there's you know, quite a bit of coloring matter in this water. It's been in here for a couple of hours. Now look at that surface that we just went over, nice and clean. So I just wanted to show this cattle hide that's been rinsing for too long. Um, maybe, I bet it's over two weeks. It could be like three weeks. Uh, but look at all the color that's in here. This is all tannin that washed out of the hide. I've already rinsed the hide once so it was clean, uh, so this is all coming out of the hide. So there's a bunch of this coloring matter and tannin and stuff that's in there. You can see there, hopefully there's a lot of color in that. While we're out here, let's go ahead and make some fat for working on these hides, for oiling the hide. We're gonna make what's called dubbin. This is some old uh, tallow, and I don't know what kind it is, but it's definitely tallow, which means it's just, you know, an animal fat that is very uh, thick and stiff at room temperature. That is 50% tallow and 50% of what is usually neat's foot oil. That's like the classic dubbin. But I don't have neat's foot oil, so we're going to use olive oil. And we had about most of this full, so let's see how much we have here. So we're going to do about 50%. I've used olive oil a lot, had no problems with it. It's also traditionally used in tanning quite a bit. That's good enough. Not 50%, but um, I'm gonna, just because I have it, I have a bunch of old cod liver oil. I'm gonna add some of that. Cod liver oil has other specific uses in tanning in something called oil tanning. Oil tanning is real interesting because it's the breakdown products of this oil when it's oxidized inside the hide that actually tan the hide. So it's not just an oiling process. You saturate the skin with this and then as the skin dries, the oil decays because it's extremely unstable in exposure to oxygen and heat. It's similar to like flax oil or linseed oil where you're not supposed to leave a linseed oil rag uh, wadded up in a corner because it will oxidize so fast that it produces heat and it can catch, literally catch on fire. So it, this has a lot of the same oils actually. And when those oils break down, they form chemicals, a bunch of really nasty chemicals, which is why you don't want to eat this when it's old. If you want to eat it at all, that's, you know, controversial. And those chemicals actually tan the hide in the same way that smoke or tannic acid tan a hide. So very interesting. A friend of mine, Jason, um, he has a channel called Diverse Workshops, I think. I'll make a link, uh, but he doesn't really have much up yet but um, he's really into oil tanning and knows a lot about it, which I don't. Instead of going and melting this, I'm just going to dump it into a bigger container, seal it up, and leave it in the hot sun because it's been very hot, and on a real hot day, probably tomorrow, uh, this very well might completely melt together. 
I may end up heating it anyway uh, when we actually go to use it. Okay, this morning we're gonna finish out this cattle hide and well, at least start, start finishing it. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna paste it onto this old board here, but I got a problem, which is it's growing a little bit of black mold. Here, we really don't want that. Um, you know, once I paste a damp hide on here and let it dry slowly, that's just a recipe for disaster. This is the best I can come up with though, that's big enough to do the job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bleach this out and let it, you know, sit and dry slowly for an hour or two. And I think that'll do it. Okay, this is probably a five to 10% bleach solution. I just dumped some in, but it's pretty strong. I mean, that's, that's a lot of chlorine. Okay, so we'll come back uh, when this is basically dry. This uh, hide has been soaking in fresh water for about, I don't know, maybe six weeks even. Too long but uh, just have not been able to get around to it. That's generally a bad idea uh, to leave hides soaking in fresh water for a long time, but remember this hide is fully penetrated and tanned. It is very, very stable. Uh, the likelihood that it lost any significant amount of protein uh, due to some kind of degradation, very, very slim. Um, you know, it doesn't smell. It's just, it has that nice like fermented bark tan smell that the liquor has. You can see there's some sconge grew in here and stuff, but it's fine, not a problem. So what we're doing now is I'm gonna scud this because, just because I don't want this liquid in here. You see, all that liquid, that's obviously gonna make the hide dry much slower. And the point here is to dry the hide, so. And as I do this, I am gonna get still just a little bit more tissue coming off of the hide, but it's not gonna be very much. Just typically, if you just keep going over it over and over and over again, you're always gonna get like a little bit more of this flesh side tissue off. So really the objective here is just to get water out. I'm just kind of like, as usual, going ahead to try to get a little bit. What's left of this? this tissue, this stuff right here. But I'm getting rid of a whole lot of water that I now won't have to evaporate out of the skin. Rinse all these shavings off. I just realized that I forgot a step. Um, I need to scrub the uh, grain side. All right, so this brush right here is probably too coarse. Um, it's so coarse that it could scratch the grain and damage it. We don't want that. So I'm gonna use this little nail brush if it works. What we're removing is look here closely. You can see these kind of light colored spots. There's a whole bunch of them down here. Um, I hope you can see them. It's a little hard maybe because of a, the doppled light. It's just something that settles on the hide like some kind of insoluble crystals or something like that. It's definitely not wanting to come off here. Well, I may have to try a stiffer brush. Let me see what I can find. We're having a tough time here. There's a whole lot of it in here. I hope you can see that, like how much of it is there. Usually it, it just takes a lot of persistence, like you think it's not coming off, but if you just work at it long enough, it'll come off. I got as much as I could off, but it's actually pretty bad. Uh, you can see there's a big patch right here. I think what might have happened is, I, I think I already told you guys that the tub sprang a leak and all of the liquor drained out of this. So it was like buried in, you know, damp bark, but with a lot of air getting in there. I don't remember ever having this much trouble removing this stuff uh, with a brush like that before. And the first thing we're gonna do is take this tool, uh, you could call it a slicking iron, stainless steel, not very sharp. And I'm just gonna use it to kind of start to stretch the hide out again if it needs it and it will take out a little bit of moisture it almost looks like i don't even need this 
mean, here's a few wrinkles that I could try to work out a little bit with this tool. But most of that will be worked out with the slate tool on the other side. And here we have our 50-50 mix of tallow and liquid oil dubbin. Now on this side I want a pretty good thick coating because we're actually going to use this to stick the hide down to the board. So I really want some extra oil in here. So what's going to happen here is when I turn this over and paste it down to the board using this fat, the fat consists of, you know, a whole bunch of different fatty acids. And since it has a bunch of tallow, it's going to have a bunch of really hard fats that are hard at room temperature. You can already see those starting to seize up here and turn white. Uh, but it's also going to have liquid fats from like the olive oil. And the liquid fats are going to be the ones that penetrate the skin more. And these harder fats that are turning white are going to solidify and harden and stick the skin down to the board. <clears throat> there are other options for this for sure. You could uh, potentially nail it out, stake it out. You could just even just dry it, you know, just oil it and just hang it up or something. I like doing this because it makes the hide really nice and flat. But I was tempted not to do it just because I have to deal with this stupid piece of strand board. I hate this stuff. Who doesn't? Okay, another thing to discuss is this has a lot of texture to it, like a whole lot. And you could never get away with that uh, where you're pasting out like a thinner hide. But with this thick hide, hopefully we're not going to see any of that um, texture coming through to the other side when we slick it out. Because this is just a very thick skin. A lot of it's about a quarter inch, even more. Okay, on this side I don't need nearly as much. Still want a pretty good coat because, you know, I want enough oil on here that a bunch of it's going to soak in. That's the point. Oiling this thick leather like this is a little challenging under these kind of home conditions. Um, I don't really have it figured out, but it, it always works out. But, you know, ideally you'd want to get this deep into the hide and have like kind of an even amount of uh, oil distributed through the hide fiber. And that's very difficult on a, a thick skin like this. I have done things before like oil it and then, you know, like this and then leave it out in the sun. So the, you know, as the hide is drying, it uh, sucks that fat further down into the fiber structure. So you could do things like, you know, oil it once just and not paste it down, but just hang it up and let it dry slowly in the air and then re-dampen it and just do this process to get kind of a double, double fatting. Okay, so now we go back to our slate slicker. And we're gonna use this to flatten the hide out, really try to get it to stick down to the board here. Seems to be working pretty good in most parts. You can see there's like a bubbly area here. Um, not only is that bubbly, but this part of the hide is just really, really thick, dense, stiff leather, like here, and it's just not going to want to stick. So I'm not, I'm not going to fight that. It's okay. Whereas these other parts of the hide where it's thinner and less bubbly are definitely sticking down better. So you can use this to whatever extent you want to try to get out, you know, more wrinkles, and get the thing super flat and stretched out. So any kind of like dents and marks, like for instance, this hide has a whole bunch of marks in it where it was uh, layered in the bark. So it's like, you know, resting against bark chips and they'll leave little dents here and there. And this can help take all of that stuff out. You know what I forgot I usually do with this? Uh, I usually just put a little bit of oil on here, do this whole slicking process and then add more oil. Cause you could see this isn't, working that good. So I'll just move all this over here. Slick this down. I'm really not going to try to do a super good job on this, but one thing I do want to do is every time I finish an area, I'm just going to very gently try to take out 
all of the marks that are left from like the edges of this tool right here. We'll take some of this fat, put it back here. So I actually want this in the sun for a little while. Uh, this is good timing because it's late in the day. I can just move it out here like that. I don't want it to dry too much. I just want it to start drying a little and allow some of this to penetrate a little bit. And then I'll move it into the shade and make sure it dries slow for the rest of the duration. So uh, this worked out pretty good. I had this in the sun for maybe like an hour, an hour and a half. It's gonna leave this uncovered for the night. It's, it feels like it's gonna be a pretty warm night, but it shouldn't dry too much or too fast. All right, this morning, as you can see, parts of the leather appear to be dry. They're not really, they have a little bit of oiliness to them. Other parts have a substantial amount of fat. I'm just gonna kind of even that out with a little bit of extra. Pretty thin. I just wanna get sort of a thin even coat over everything. Kind of hard to do with the cold. It's really not cold, but on a wet piece of skin in the morning, it's gonna congeal this fat pretty fast. So as you can see, this will get a little bit of dappled sunlight through the tree today, but it's not gonna get very much. I've pulled it back into the shade because I have to run off into town for a while. So like in a previous video, I said, it's really nice to be able to control your environment when you're tanning. Sometimes it's important, sometimes it's just convenient. Um, in this case, you know, you really don't want this to just dry up really fast in one day. So if you have to, you could think about things like, um, you know, suspending a sheet of plywood just barely over the surface of the leather, uh, you know, cardboard, um, cloth, like just, you know, a blanket or something laid over there. Uh, don't dry it too slow because it will start to mold on the underside, but you know if you need to You can kind of regulate the the uh, environment just a little bit by using stuff like that I wouldn't use plastic because you know, you don't want to block all of the the moisture from leaving But even just like an old sheet or blanket or a piece of cardboard or something will really uh, help to Slow that drying down if that's a problem right now. We're kind of in the fall it's it's fairly warm, but it's not, you know, this isn't going to dry super fast. So I think I'll be able to just leave this out all day. But uh, I'll go to town, come back, and check on it and, and uh, you know, act as necessary. The uh, sun was kind of getting on this, so I just uh, tilted it back away from the sun, uh, which is fine. You can actually stand these uh, pretty much vertical. Usually the, the hide will still stick there. So this is the end of uh, two days. Well, I guess uh, since yesterday afternoon. And uh, it did get some sun yesterday, but it's still quite damp, actually. You know, so it's, it's proceeding really good. You know, if uh, it's not uh, very dry by tomorrow evening, I might, uh, you know, let it get a little bit of sun or something the next day and try to finish it up. But uh, things seem to be going pretty good. Here we are at the uh, beginning of day three. This should be dry by the end of tomorrow for sure. Uh, the next video, we'll look at all the leather we made, lessons learned, stuff like that, how it turned out, possible uses. And then I'll do one video that's all just questions that have come up uh, through this whole series, because it's a big series and a lot of people have left comments with questions and stuff. So feel free to leave uh, more questions on this video or any of the other ones, and I'll go through them all and glean out a bunch of stuff to talk about. And maybe we'll get around to actually making some stuff with this too. We'll see about that.